Heartbreak and despair flooded Facebook and Twitter on the evening of March the 24th, 2013, as The Walking Dead dominated social media, becoming the number one hashtag trend in the entire world. Promising to be an emotional episode in its title, This Sorrowful Life, and with an array of potential spoiler pictures making their way around the internet throughout the week, the world was prepared for tears. Still, nothing could prepare anyone for what was about to come. Arguably one of the greatest episodes this season, This Sorrowful Life, while the penultimate episode of season 3 for the viewers, in many ways it was a climactic finale and a closing chapter in the life of one of the show's most loved characters, Daryl Dixon. Michael Rooker's flawless portrayal of Mel Dixon was given the spotlight this week as the wildcard himself was determined to go out swinging, bionic knife stump and all, or Little Mel as Rooker himself has dubbed it. For weeks it has been rumoured that a main character would be killed off, but who could have seen Merle, one of the show's most popular characters, going out the way that he did? This sorrowful life paid homage to season 1 in a number of ways. Merle, when approached by Rick, referred to him as Officer Friendly, a nod which is guaranteed to make fans of the show revisit the first season to see how well it is actually written, and the sheer amount of throwbacks is wonderful, particularly in season 3. The second homage to season 1 however is the main one. When Daryl and Rick go back to the roof to find Merle gone and his bloody hand left as walkabout, Daryl utters the words, Nobody can kill Merle but Merle. It is this throwback that echoes so beautifully and so brutally in this sorrowful life. Merle Dixon's declaration that Rick doesn't have it in him to get the job done is also a throwback to season 2 where Shane states that Rick isn't cut out for the post-apocalyptic world. Rick, who was on the verge of going back on his plan to hand Michonne over to the governor in exchange for his people to be left alone, had his plans foiled by the unpredictable Merle who decided to take matters into his own hand and little Merle. Leading Michonne into a silent area of the prison, Merle proceeded to knock her out and appeared to be taken her to Woodbury to hand her over to the governor. Instead, Merle, who is a military veteran, appeared to have a genius strategy and a game plan all along, at least to an extent. Merle taking Michonne away from the prison would force Rick into telling his plans to the rest of the survivors. This happened. Merle, who went on to let Michonne go so that she could return to the prison, appeared to know all of this would happen. He also stated that he knew Rick would back down, and he knew that the governor had every intention of killing everyone at the prison, including his brother Daryl, regardless of whether Michonne was handed over or not. Merle, who stated that since the world went to shit he had killed 16 men, all of which had been since he joined the governor in Woodbury, displayed for the first time in the series a deep scent of guilt that laid upon his conscience, even elements of regret. However, most of all, Merle showcased a love for his brother. While everyone else at the prison may have seen Merle as a devil, Daryl obviously knew that deep down Merle was a good guy, even if his brother doesn't play well with others. Merle's intentions were perfectly clear, to take out as many of the governor's men as possible and the governor himself before any attack can put his brother in harm's way. The way Merle went about launching an attack on the governor and his people was masterfully thought out, incredibly directed and the payoff, when viewed on screen, will undeniably prove to go down as some of the show's most memorable moments yet. Blasting motorhead, swilling whiskey, and even going as far as to simulate a walker drinking, much to his own amusement, Merle methodically lured a huge group of walkers to the meeting place where Rick was told to hand Michonne over, which inevitably caused a panic. Taking the governor completely by surprise, Merle military rolled away from his stolen car, sirens blaring and all, and stealthily made his way into a building where he quickly began showcasing his military prowess. Taking out a number of nameless henchmen, the talented one-handed marksman locked the governor firmly into his crosshairs and unlike Rick and Andrea, Merle had zero intentions of faltering and missing his shot and he displayed no elements of conscience or remorse. Seemingly never missing a target in his life, the living breathing hitman was about to save his little brother's life and the lives of everyone else at the prison also. However, what Merle could not plan for was the young Ben stepping in the line of fire and while Merle's shot was indeed right on target, it was Ben that took the bullet while the governor was left unscathed. It was then that from the darkness emerged a biter and it was this biter that alerted the governor's henchmen to Merle's whereabouts. As Martinez got a few kicks in, the governor took over and demanded that they leave Merle to him. Dragging Merle back into the building, a back and forth fight ensued, but the governor's dirty tactics soon became too much for Merle. Having his fingers brutally bitten off, Merle uttered his last words, I ain't begging you, but the governor ran game over on Merle Dixon's running this show when he whipped out a gun and pulled the trigger, penetrating the passionate, uncontrollable heart of the one-armed warrior and leaving him for dead. Then came a final chapter in the life of Daryl Dixon. 
After Michonne told Daryl that Merle was still alive, Daryl tracked him to the location of his demise. From afar, he saw Merle bent over the body of Ben, feasting on his flesh. Merle Dixon, as Daryl knew and loved him, was no more. As Merle slowly lifted his head, revealing his walkerfied state, Daryl wept, as did the entire Walking Dead fanbase. After finally being reunited with his brother after all this time, and after trying so hard to get Merle to fit in, and just when it looked like everything was going to be okay, the world for Daryl Dixon once again had gone to shit, and for the first time ever we saw true emotion in Daryl's eyes, tears for his big brother. Daryl, inconsolable and confused, simply did not know what to do. He spent time just shoving Walker Mill back before hysterically pushing him to the ground, mounting him and caving his face in with a series of unadulterated and equally brutal stabs to the face and head. But there was more to this scene than meets the eye. It was as symbolic as it was heartbreaking. In killing his big brother, Daryl had closed the last remaining door to the past, to the world that once was but is no more, and he opened a door to the future. For three seasons, Merle had been the subject of Daryl's mind, finding his brother and then protecting his brother. Now, with Merle gone, exactly what will Daryl's purpose be? Overall, The Walking Dead Season 3 Episode 15, This Sorrowful Life, was undeniably one of the very best of the season yet. The penultimate episode of the season and a climactic finale for the Dixon brothers, the episode was filled with throwbacks, conclusions and a sign of things to come. The preview for the coming finale, Welcome to the Tombs, which premiered on The Talking Dead, shows the governor and a huge army invading the prison. Let us also not forget that Andrea is still locked in the governor's torture chamber back in Woodbury. Also, who burnt the walkers in the pit? Could Morgan return to save the day? Exactly who else will die in the season finale, and perhaps most important of all, will Daryl Dixon be able to avenge his big brother? The finale of The Walking Dead Season 3 airs next Sunday, March 31st, 2013, and it is destined to be as world-changing as this sorrowful life, if not even more so. Let's just hope that a reckless, emotional Daryl doesn't meet the same fate as his big brother. As always, my friends, thumbs up, subscribe, get commenting, and enjoy.